How's it going everyone and welcome to the very first ranking video on this channel. My name is Gavin and if you know me in any regard or you've listened to my podcast, you know for sure that I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. Myself and many others included would confidently say that this game series is easily up there as one of my favorite series of all time. And there are many games in this series that I would consider to be some of my favorite video games of all time. Uh, but there are also definitely some games and some quote-unquote video games uh, that I would say are not so great. Now, respective to the Kingdom Hearts series, I've gone ahead and placed each of these games in 13 spots. So a quick reminder for everyone who might not be super familiar with the way that these ranking videos work, I'm going to be ranking the Kingdom Hearts games from what I believe to be the worst to the best. And remember, this is just my opinion, so your least favorite Kingdom Hearts game is probably not going to be, well, it, it might be if we're being totally honest, but your favorite Kingdom Hearts game might not be my favorite Kingdom Hearts video game. This is also going to be totally spoiler free, so if you are new to the Kingdom Hearts franchise or you don't want to be spoiled on anything that you haven't played yet, you can be sure that any of the footage that I'm going to put in this video and any of the details that I'm going to talk about, this is all going to be pretty much spoiler free. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with number 13. In last place and in 13th place, I'm going to go ahead and put the most recent Kingdom Hearts video game to be updated, and that is Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. The gameplay is almost non-existent. This is a mobile video game that is very heavily reliant on you just leaving your phone completely just enslaved to this video game, just running constantly. There's kind of a card-based system, which is not entirely new to the franchise, like with games like Chain of Memories. The gameplay in Dark Road, if, if you want to call it gameplay, uh, really is just you leaving the game open and uh, leaving the game on auto mode. And depending on what sort of cards or attacks or abilities you have in your deck, the game just plays itself and you rack up points and you purchase new cards and new abilities, and that's that's the entire gameplay loop. The game is now in offline mode, which arguably I'd say is the best way to play this game if you're going to play it. But before it went offline, this was a gotcha, you know, loot box kind of driven game that, you know, required you pay money if you wanted golden tickets to get a higher chance at random cards. All in all, this is a mobile game through and through. The gameplay is not really why you come to Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. The story to this game is really the only reason why you're going to come here. Without getting into too many spoilers, this game is supposed to show you the life of one of the main antagonists in the Kingdom Hearts series before they really became one of the antagonists in the series. The final update to this game came out fairly recently and if you're gonna listen to me honestly I, I would say just go ahead and watch the cutscenes on YouTube you'll get through the game a lot faster and you won't have to deal with all of the grinding mobile gotcha stuff coming in in 12th we're gonna go ahead and say Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and Kingdom Hearts back cover all as one package. Kingdom Hearts back cover is the companion piece to the story of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, but this is really just a movie. This is not a game. The story is really interesting, but ultimately the experience of Union Cross comes whole with this companion movie. Now Union Cross as a game itself I would say does have more gameplay than that of Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, which is why I realistically would put it higher than Dark Road, but Kingdom Hearts Union Cross also is a mobile gacha game. Like in Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, whenever you get into battles, there is an auto button that allows you to pretty much just blast through the battles on their own, but there is some sense of exploration to this game. There are worlds that we have never seen in the Kingdom Hearts series up until this game, and there are lots of revisited worlds from other Kingdom Hearts games that you will explore in this game as well. Now, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, both together, are supposed to kind of go hand in hand in sort of giving you an idea of where the series is going to go, post Kingdom Hearts 3, but realistically, the way that they're going about putting all of this story 
uh, information into these mobile games is uh, it kind of puts a little sour taste in, in my mouth, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. But I will say that the story to this game is incredibly intriguing. There is lots and lots and lots of stuff to, to be theorizing about. If you're interested in getting into the lore of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, I would honestly highly recommend you go check out Demo279 on YouTube. He's done countless videos on these Kingdom Hearts mobile games. Now that I even say it, you can't actually even play this game anymore. So even though Kingdom Hearts Union Cross used to be a game that you could play, there really is no way for you to actually play the game anymore. The game is completely just a theater mode. So coming in in 11th place is going to be Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance. I know a lot of people really do enjoy the Game Boy Advance version, actually a lot more than the PS2 version. Uh, myself, the PlayStation 2 remake, Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, was my very first entrance to this video game. So going back from Re Chain of Memories to the Game Boy Advance version was a, a bit of a learning curve for me, to say the least. I played Re Chain of Memories right after Kingdom Hearts 1 as well, so I've already kind of got my feel for, you know, this 3D action RPG made by Square. So going to a 2D version, trying to translate that, did not necessarily feel right in my hands, if that makes sense. The game is definitely not bad by any means, but it's one that I never really finished, mostly because I had already played Rechain of Memories, and I was just way more comfortable playing that game anyways. I was getting really frustrated trying to, uh, you know, create commands in this game, and it, I don't know, it just wasn't for me when it came to the gameplay. The story in the Game Boy Advance version also kind of takes a, a hit in a few places, mostly whenever you continue to compare it to Re-Chain of Memories. The remake included lots of cutscenes as well as, you know, just all of the voice acted dialogue. There are entirely new bosses in the game that you can fight, all of which just in my opinion kind of puts the Game Boy Advance version down in a spot that I wouldn't necessarily say is worth playing if you have the HD remaster. If you think the game might be for you, go ahead and check it out. Uh, it's really cheap. I got mine for like 10 bucks, you know, on eBay one time. I'm sure you can find a copy of it. Coming in in 10th place is Kingdom Hearts Recoded. So this is also another re game in the Kingdom Hearts series. The original game came out for mobile phones in Japan, uh, not like smartphones, like how Dark Road and Union Cross are, but like with actual buttons, like on their little flip phones that they had. So they went ahead and they remade this game for the Nintendo DS. Now, I will say, I think this is probably one of the more fun uh, of the handheld titles in the Kingdom Hearts series. But the story is really where I personally, you know, that's that's why I come back to these games all the time. It's I want to know what's going to happen next. I want to know the lore. I want, I'm here for the characters. Kingdom Hearts Recoded simply is just really lacking, really bare bones. It rehashes a lot of story that you've already experienced and doesn't really do it in a very interesting or, I don't know, quirky way. It might try to, but it's it's not it's not very successful. You could try, but you would not be successful. So without going too much into uh, the s spoilers of the game, you do play kind of as a digital version of Sora. This, this game kind of all takes place in a computer and a lot of people might argue that the story here doesn't entirely matter. To some degree it does, especially whenever you get to the later portions of the game, and if you have the HD remaster collection that has the movie version, there are even, I believe, some scenes that are not included at all in the original game that kind of give you some sort of hints at where the series is going to go in the future. So even though this game does shine pretty bright in the gameplay aspect with lots of variety, uh, there is just not a whole lot of story here, and for me that just that puts this game uh, pretty low on my list. Coming in at number nine is Kingdom Hearts 0.2, A Fragmentary Passage. This is kind of a, a pseudo sequel to the epilogue of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, as well as a prelude of sorts to Kingdom Hearts 3. In this game, you play as a character named Aqua, 
who is battling her way through the realm of darkness. I'm not trying to go too into spoilers because the premise of this game alone is a bit spoilerific for the series. The visuals in this game really are fantastic and it's the very first time that we got to see Kingdom Hearts just in general running on the Unreal Engine. Since this is basically a prelude to Kingdom Hearts 3, they designed the gameplay in a way to sort of give you a taste of what Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to feel like. This is kind of a demo, so to speak, to the engine that you're gonna be playing Kingdom Hearts 3 in. For the content that is here, I think the story is pretty intriguing. It's, the main thing is just, the game is so short. I think on average you can beat this in like an hour or two or something like that just on the first time playthrough. Just like some of the games before this, this is kind of, you know, you really are just kind of coming here to, you know, experience the story that Square wants you to experience before you jump into Kingdom Hearts 3. And to that degree, I think it's effective in what it does. We get some really cool information in the story of this game. Uh, but the game, like I said, it's just so short. Um, it's definitely, it's going to fall below a lot of my favorite games in this series. Coming in at number eight is Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. Now, I know a lot of people uh, are, might see this placement on the list and uh, they might think that it should be higher. Uh, some people might think it should be lower. But for me, I think this is kind of just a right in the middle of the road uh, sort of game for me personally. The story to this game, I personally think is one of the best stories in the Kingdom Hearts series. Here we're mostly following a character named Roxas and his two co-workers, essentially. The story goes kind of hand in hand with the gameplay loop in that you are kind of just monotonously going through missions and tasks and you're essentially, you're this whole game is just you doing your job with your co-workers and at the end of the day you go and you have ice cream with your buddies and in that sense i think the story is really effective and you know I, i'm not going to get into too many spoilers here like i like i keep saying but uh there is definitely an emotional payoff to this game and i think i think that the monotony of the gameplay really really does drive home the story here so I know you'll often see people online talk about how the story to this game is really, really well done, and I agree with them. But personally, I think the best way for you to get the most out of this story is to play the original game on the Nintendo DS. But that's kind of where some of my gripes with this game uh, come in place. Though the story is effective and that it goes hand in hand with the gameplay, you are still spending time with this game you are still putting in the hours you know playing a video game the mission structure is incredibly repetitive the gameplay loop it just it just goes in a circle. There's definitely lots of fun to be had here on the Nintendo DS version, uh, especially if you're playing online. There, If you have other friends who have the game as well, there actually is a multiplayer mode uh, that a lot of people tend to miss out on. But, you know, if you got a buddy, if you got two copies of the game, go ahead and check it out. It's definitely a good time. But if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan who's here for the story and you want to see where all this goes, uh, the gameplay can definitely feel like a slog. But I'm telling you guys, uh, I think I think it's going to be worth it if you do stick it in to the end. There is the HD remaster uh, collection that comes with a fully redone cutscene, uh, like a three hour long movie of just the entire story to this game. It's really well done. I, I would say if you've played the game, definitely go ahead and check it out. But if you have not played the game, um, I would I personally would just recommend you play the game and experience the story firsthand with the gameplay loop and the story going hand in hand with one another uh, and then checking out the HD movie. And I think I think you might really enjoy the experience a lot more if you do if you do it that way. Here at number seven, we got Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories. Like I said, this was the first version of Chain of Memories that I personally played. Uh, I think it's a really good time. I, I honestly, I was really kind of standoffish whenever I first played the game because the gameplay is just so different from Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, but man, just kind of as you kind of go through, I really think, I really think that the card system can definitely grab a hold of you if you let it. Some things that kind of put this game right in the middle of the road for me is, you know, the fact that there is a lot of RNG in this game. There are lots of moments in the story where you could very well be at a halt 
for hours at a time simply because you don't have the right card in your deck to open up a door you know that requires a very specific card in battles this is definitely if you're coming if you're coming right off the heels of kingdom hearts one uh final mix and the hd remaster or even on the ps2 uh this is a completely different gameplay loop yes it's still kind of a action rpg but it's also you know a strategy rpg in a way because you have a deck um, of cards that all have different magic abilities or different keyblades that have different numbers on them and you can either use each card individually or you can stack them together to create what's called a slate and it unleashes a very special attack that deals a lot of damage and the enemies are using pretty much the same card system. There are plenty of moments in the game where you think that you're about to use a really powerful attack on them only for an enemy to use a zero card and cancel everything out and I can't tell you how many times I would just flip a table because of, because of that the story here is also very interesting. If you are coming right after the credits roll of Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories picks up immediately where Sora and the gang's journey ends in the first game. It has you going through a castle called Castle Oblivion, where you go through different rooms that are essentially like holographic recreations. <laughs> like, I don't know, sort of just like replicas of worlds that Sora went to in the first Kingdom Hearts game. You'll see lots of the same characters, you'll see lots of the same story kind of rehashed over and over again. So whenever you're going through individual worlds in the game, it can feel very repetitive as far as the story goes, but whenever you are going through the castle itself and you encounter the mysterious Organization 13 for the very first time, that's really where the meat and potatoes of this game kind of lies. The story is definitely very intriguing here, and if you finished Kingdom Hearts 1 and you are looking for, you know, what happens next, this is where you're going to start next, and I think it is a really underlooked game. So coming in at number 6, we're going to put Kingdom Hearts Melody Melody of Memory. Melody of Memory is, I would say, the least story heavy out of all of the Kingdom Hearts games. When it comes to the story, that's kind of where this game it falls short for a lot of people, understandably, uh, because there's just not a whole lot here. There's not a whole lot of cutscenes, and there's just not a whole lot of time that you get to spend with the characters that you love from the Kingdom Hearts series. But that doesn't mean it's not here. You might get a lot of uh, questions answered and you might get just a lot more questions raised in your mind as to where the series is going to go next after Kingdom Hearts 3. As for gameplay, this is the very first official Kingdom Hearts rhythm game. If you know me and you know my love for Kingdom Hearts, you know most of my love really comes from the beautiful works of the goddess Yoko Shimomura. The music that she has composed for this entire series, as, as well as with other people who she has worked with on these games, it's just been like no other, realistically. These games have some of the best soundtrack, uh, arguably, I would say one of the best soundtracks in video game history. I think I would put Yoko Shimomura's work in general as, I don't know, some of my top five favorite composers in video game history, in my opinion. This is also coming from the same team who brought you both Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm and Curtain Call on the Nintendo 3DS. If you're someone like me who also grew up playing games like Guitar Hero or Rock Band or even Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm, I would definitely check this game out for the gameplay. I wouldn't necessarily go as far to say as this is some sort of game-changing or revolutionary uh, rhythm game, uh, but if you love the Kingdom Hearts music and you are in for, you know, even just the, the smallest amount of story, this is definitely a fun one and I, I highly recommend playing this game. So coming in in fifth place, we've got Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. This game is an interesting one. This, this game has you playing as three separate characters. As soon as you finish playing the game through one character, then you basically start the game over with a different character. And you do that a grand total of three times. To get the full story here, the game kind of requires you to go through the game three times. And then once you've done that, once you've done it three times, then there is a epilogue that you play through and uh, it leads into another game in the series. And I wouldn't necessarily say that the gameplay here is entirely boring. Uh, actually, whenever you start the game again with a different character, you go through 
almost completely different level designs and you get a, a whole new story with each of these characters. They're all happening simultaneously. So occasionally you'll get little scenes here and there where the characters meet up and you'll kind of be stuck watching the same cutscene that you've seen over and over again in the game. But I would definitely say that it is totally worth it going through this game with all three characters. Originally released on the PSP, this game did get a full-on HD remaster for PS3 and PS4, uh, and we also got the Final Mix version, which was really cool that, you know, this was the first time that we got Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix in the US. You know, this includes so much more content, uh, a lot, a lot of more enemy designs, things like that. Like this is, I would say the H, I would say the Final Mix version is the definitive way to play Birth by Sleep. This game came out after Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, and it continues to use the command deck system that we saw in the Nintendo DS game. This was definitely a departure from Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2's command menu, because uh, this is more of like a rotating deck. I'm personally not huge on this system and that's kind of why it knocks it down on the list a bit for me. I know a lot of people do love this game for its gameplay and its story combined, uh, but for me realistically the, the gameplay just doesn't entirely hit too well for me. Um, I do enjoy the story a whole lot and I would say the story alone is is absolutely worth playing through all of all three of those campaigns. Coming in in fourth place is the original Kingdom Hearts. Like Birth by Sleep, this game also had a Final Mix version. I mean, this was the first game in the series to get a Final Mix, and we finally got it here in America with the HD remasters. I think I might have actually put this game a little bit lower on my list originally, but, you know, recently, especially if you've listened to my podcast, I did get the opportunity to kind of relive this game, both for, you know, the 15th time, but also kind of for the first time again uh, in our podcast that we recently did. My buddy Dash played through Kingdom Hearts 1 for the very first time, and we went through it like a book club, and he got to tell me all of his uh, many, many opinions on, on this game as someone who has never played it before. I think I absolutely have a bigger appreciation for this game now than I did, let's say, a few, I don't know, three or four years ago. There is a lot of charm and a lot of stuff that Square designed in this very first game that definitely kicked off something for Square Enix going into the future. The concept of Disney merging with Square and using the likeness of Final Fantasy characters, this was definitely a big deal in gaming at the time. This was really one of the first major crossovers that really went mainstream. Though it has been remastered on pretty much every modern hardware right now, the game still definitely shows its age in a few spots. Mostly things like platforming. This is definitely a PlayStation 2 game. By that I mean there are multiple times where Sora will try to jump onto a ledge or grab onto a vine or, I don't know, he's trying to do some sort of platforming stuff that you would do in something like a Mario type game and honestly it just doesn't work super well for this game. You'll find that Sora is absolutely the most slow in this game than he is in any of the Kingdom Hearts games. But like I said too, with the charm that this game gives off, I mean, this is the very first time that we see the gang really come together. Sora, Donald, and Goofy going on these adventures. It's so fun. And honestly, I, I would say that this is probably one of the best games to, I don't know, if you have kids like me, I would definitely say that if they are interested in playing video games, this is definitely a good one to start with. Collecting abilities and playing the game and exploring these worlds is definitely a good time. The story is charming. It's, you know, definitely for a younger audience, but there are absolutely deeper tones into this game that has many, many adults all over the world uh, just, you know, shouting the praises of this series. And a lot of that started here in this first game. I definitely think that this game uh, has been looked at very critically over the last couple of years, especially with releases like Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, but, you know, go back and go back and play it. If you haven't played it in a while, go back and check out Kingdom Hearts 1. It is, it, it might be better than you remember. Uh, it might be worse. I don't know. Moving into our top three, in third place, we got Kingdom Hearts 3. This game was a long time coming. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005, and yes, every game that came out in between two and three 
is canon and is definitely worth playing and I and I definitely recommend you play all those games in between but there are a lot of people out there who just stuck to the mainline titles and if that was you then you were waiting a very 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 long time for this game Kingdom Hearts 3 definitely has uh, somewhat of a mixed reputation on the internet there are some people who say this is the peak this is the pinnacle this is this is what kingdom hearts is and then there are some people who you know they put this at the very bottom of their list you know a lot of a lot of a lot of angry kingdom hearts fans when it comes to kingdom hearts 3 i personally had a great time with kingdom hearts 3 I think the gameplay is fun. Visually, if you were a fan of the way 0.2, a fragmentary passage, looked, you're just going to find even more, I arguably I would say, prettier visuals to be looking at in this game. For me personally, a lot of a lot of expectations were kind of riding on Kingdom Hearts 3. And if I'm going to be totally honest here, um, Though I loved the ending, it made me cry. I mean, every single time I watch the ending to this game, I, I tear up. Um, but, you know, there were just moments that I felt were maybe spoiled for me in the trailers. And I just, I, I, could, I couldn't get them out of my head. Every single time that we got to a point uh, that I saw in the trailer, I felt like it was, you know, I, I know exactly where this is going. You know, I personally... I found myself not enjoying this game as much as I feel like I really could have had I not just watched the trailers. And this is something that Square has been criticized heavily for, especially in recent years. Games like Neo The World Ends With You, games like Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, you know, probably other games that have not even been released yet. I'm saying, guys, if you want to go into these games for their stories, I would highly suggest maybe not watching every one of the trailers. Watch some of them, you know, get your hype up. Hype responsibly, as Super Derek says. But uh, go ahead and, you know, make sure your expectations are in order for this game. This is a fantastic game. The, ga the story, the gameplay, everything goes to new heights in this game. And uh, it's definitely worth playing. Our runner-up for first place is going to be Kingdom Hearts dream drop distance now uh, this is probably the most wild card uh for a lot of people you know as far as i i place it here on my list but i really <laughs> i really really like this game uh, i liked it on the 3ds i liked it whenever we got it on the playstation 4 i think this is i think that this game is pretty underrated and i know a lot of people uh dislike it for a lot of reasons i think mostly for where the story starts to go but when it comes to the story in this game, without getting into many spoilers here, this game is really where Kingdom Hearts started to take a turn. There are some tropes of storytelling in this game that I think a lot of people were hoping that the series was not going to do, and then they did it. But personally, I don't know. I, I find it just, you know, Nomura, Tetsuya Nomura, the director of these games, he seems pretty clear that he wants this game to just go and go and go and go and you know some people might hate that you know not having an ending but you know for someone like me who loves theorizing and loves just having new questions uh, to be asked all the time i i think that there is a lot in this game there are lots of questions that are that are answered but like i said there are lots of questions that are raised in this game as well. One of the things that I do love about this game that I know some other people might be mixed on as well is the level design. This is the most vertical <laughs> in level design that we have gotten in the Kingdom Hearts series. Flow motion is a concept introduced in this game and you can ju you are just bouncing everywhere. You are just climbing up buildings and you are flying off of roof rooftops. It is, um, it is definitely some of the most open that Kingdom Hearts has been uh, up to this point. And I person, I'm all there for it. I love it. I think the mobility, the fast paced nature of the gameplay, even some of the broken gameplay mechanics, I just have a great time every single time I play it. Man, the fact that it was all pulled off on the 3DS originally uh, is really, really, really something special. I, personally, one of the biggest negatives I have of this game, uh, one, is the lack of Final Fantasy characters and kind of the replacement of them for these creatures called Dream Eaters. They're definitely the most uh, cutesy sort of, you know, NPCs that we've gotten 
in the Kingdom Hearts series. We get them as enemies and allies in this game, which is a really interesting concept. But if you're someone who is interested you know, in the Pokemon series as well, you might see a lot of similarities here. There is an entire battle section of this game where you can make your Dream Eater allies go against the Nightmare Dream Eaters in this game uh, in, a, in a tournament called Flick Rush, which can be fun, but it's also not very fun in my opinion. I think that's probably the weakest part of this game, uh, but in contrast, I think the strongest part of this game, which I think I'm just going to go ahead and say it now, I think this, this Kingdom Hearts game, Dream Drop Distance, in my opinion, has the best soundtrack in the entire series. Uh, there are just so many beautiful remixes to songs that we already love from the first Kingdom Hearts game, the second Kingdom Hearts. You know, there are just so many redone tracks here that I think are just, they're, they're, wor they're worth a listen. If you're going to play this game for anything, play it for just the music alone. Almost every track here in this game is an absolute banger. Uh, a certified heater. I just I can't sing the praises enough for the music in this game. Go play it if you haven't played it. Go listen to the music if you don't ever plan on playing it. Just, it's so good. So lastly, by process of elimination, in first place we got Kingdom Hearts 2. And this is another game that got the final mix treatment in Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, in my opinion, I like this, this is what Kingdom Hearts is. Uh, not just Kingdom Hearts. I think after Square made Kingdom Hearts 2, the gameplay here, it, there was a shift in the company, I feel. Uh, if you've played even games like, you know, the Nier games, or you've played uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, other Final Fantasy games too, like Final Fantasy XV, Kingdom Hearts 2 started this trend in sort of open level design and action RPG combat, you know, like it really, it really started something here. And for good reason, I, I mean, it, there's a good reason why these games follow in the footsteps of Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2, I really think, in my opinion, is the most fun in the series. The gameplay, the story, the music, every single aspect of this game, in my opinion, is what puts this as the number one position. I love these games for their story, and the story here, I'm not going to spoil anything, but man, man, oh man, they could have stopped here, and I would have been fine, personally. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad that there are more, but realistically, this, th this is such a good stamp on the Kingdom Hearts series. I think if anybody were to look at what a Kingdom Hearts game is, Kingdom Hearts 2, in my opinion, is what I believe to be the gold standard for action RPGs, for the Kingdom Hearts series, you know, for a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm going to go ahead and put Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix as my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. So that's going to do it here, guys, for my Kingdom Hearts ranking video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you have your own ranking of all of the Kingdom Hearts games, Put it down in the comments. I want to know your list for all of these games. If you like this format of video and you like seeing ranking videos like this, go ahead and let me know. I do actually have some more plans for ranking videos, top 10s, things like that. Not just for the Kingdom Hearts series, though there will be more Kingdom Hearts videos, uh, but also for games like Final Fantasy, the Xeno series. I mean, I'm uh, this is going to be a new thing that I'm going to be doing here on this channel. So if you liked it, let me know. Go ahead and give this video a share. Hit the subscribe button too. If you're new here and you like this sort of content, you know, that is the best way that I I know that people like seeing this sort of stuff. If you are new here to the channel and you like hearing me talk about Kingdom Hearts, go ahead and check out my podcast as well. It's called The Overleveled Podcast and recently me and my buddy Dash went through the very first Kingdom Hearts game together and we're going to try to get to the rest of the games in the series but for right now uh, we just got done with Kingdom Hearts 1 and if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the first Kingdom Hearts game or you want to hear Dash's thoughts on you know his very first time playing the first Kingdom Hearts game go ahead and give all of those a listen. I'm really going to go ahead and start you know, making YouTube more of a priority here. So if this is something that you want to see more of other than the commenting and subscribing and things like that, if you are able to, this is not necessary at all, but I do have a Patreon. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. If you feel like you want to help support the channel monetarily, 
that is a that is a fantastic way to do so. That is a way that ensures that I can just get closer and closer and closer to be making, you know, weekly content or maybe even daily content in the future. I want to do more videos like these. I want to actually start getting into things like video game trailer reactions and things like that. Video game reviews, you know. I this is going to be something that I'm really going to put more effort into. So, if that is something you're interested in, all of the links to everything will be in the description below. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.